Now that Virginia's Attorney General Jason Miares has issued his official opinion on the Virginia Department of Education's model policies impacting transgender students, we are pressing for answers on how the policies will actually be enforced. Multiple Northern Virginia school districts announced plans to actually reject those policies. Tisha Lewis joins us now to break all this down. Tisha? Hey there, Shrin. So Attorney General Jason Miares says the policies are in line with state and federal laws, even demanding school boards across the Commonwealth follow the governor's guidance on the treatment of transgender students. The Attorney General's legal opinion coming out this morning. We reached out to Alexandria City Public Schools, Arlington Public Schools, and Fairfax County Public Schools, three of several school districts planning to maintain their current policies, acknowledging transgender students' identities. Attorney General Jason Miares' legal analysis released today says Governor Glenn Youngkin's policy is legal. Governor Youngkin's policies finalized last month require transgender and non-binary students to use facilities on campus that match their legal gender. The governor's policies also mandate parental consent to use chosen pronoun or names different from their legal name and pronoun. The federal appeals court over Virginia held that the equal protection clause resoundingly protects transgender students from school bathroom policies that prohibit them from affirming their gender. How does the attorney general's opinion and the model policy square with that court decision? Joining us to answer that question is the attorney general, Jason Miaras himself. Attorney general, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. So what's the answer to that question? Well, listen, I mean, I think the governor's uh, model policies go back to this fundamental truth that has been recognized by the Supreme Court that says fun parents have a fundamental right to the education and upbringing of their children and that parents matter. And at the end of the day, uh, these local school districts have tried to make the argument that it's not uh, legal. The reality is it is legal, both of the federal law, Title IX, which is also about protecting women's sports, and then also recognizing that the privacy of, of uh, individuals is sacrosanct in our public schools. So the governor's policies are legal. Uh, they also are common sense. Um, the school districts essentially are saying that a local school board is making decisions saying, hey, your local school cannot give your child so much as an aspirin without parental permission. But we could change your child's gender pronoun and not even inform you. And the idea of what the governor's policy was is Parents have to be involved. You can't cut parents out. If a parent and a child are dealing with gender identity issues and they want to inform the school district of that or the, their local school, then they absolutely can do so. But what it does say is you can't ignore the parent. The so parent has a fundamental right to the upbringing and education of their children, and no mom and no dad is seeking to co-parent a child with the government. This right, goes back to the realms of parents, and it goes back to what the governor and, frankly, I ran on, which is parents matter. And that's exactly what the model policies reflect. Attorney General, we have 30 seconds left. I have to ask you about the consequences. Could there be a financial impact to school districts who do not follow your policies and your recommendation? We have four major school districts right here in Northern Virginia that have said they are going to continue the status quo. Well, under the law, parents, if they feel like their rights have been violated, parents can bring a claim against that school district. And our office will evaluate every claim on a case-by-case -case basis, and we stand ready and willing to participate if we feel like it rises to that level. So they have to realize parents, you can't cut parents out, and parents have a right to bring a claim if their rights are violated. Well, it looks like we could see some investigations from your office because, again, like I said, we have four major school districts right here that are not planning to follow your recommendation or the governor's policies. Attorney General Jason Meares, thank you so much for joining us live. Thank you. Have a great night. We're back after this.